In this video we are going to create mesh terrain from points and add some buildings to it. We are not going to use any boolean operations here. All the necessary files can be found following the links in the description. We begin with the terrain points. These are not organized in any particular order, so let's use the Telani mesh tool. This is the most straightforward way to create a mesh from points but sometimes it doesn't work, so if you are having issues here, please see the tutorial referenced in the description. We have some buildings here, which we would like to add to the terrain. Imagine we would like to create a physical site model, milling the terrain and putting some buildings on top of it. So we don't want to use any boolean operations, and instead we are going to rebuild the initial terrain. I'm going to temporarily disable the Lani mesh and disconnect the points. Notice that I am using only base surfaces now. You can either extract them from the buildings or construct them separately if the original geometry is too complex. Let's extract boundary curves from the surfaces, then go under Curve, Analysis and grab Point and Curves component. We are going to test whether points are inside the boundary regions and if so, remove those points. We get the relationship in the output, but note that it's not a binary one. I'm going to filter the initial terrain points using the dispatch component, so I need to convert the relationship into a binary one. Let's input the initial points to filter, turn off the dispatch preview, and then add a point container, so we could see only the points that do not coincide with the buildings. All works fine, but we might run into some issues if some remaining terrain points are too close to the buildings. To understand this issue better, let's convert base surfaces to meshes using the mesh grab component. Then deconstruct meshes to extract the vertices and investigate their positions. As you can see, some vertices are too close and might cause problematic mesh faces so I would suggest removing such points. We could do it simply by offsetting the boundary curves using the offset curve loose. Pay attention to the distance input. The scale and the direction must match your project. In my case, I'm setting a floating number from 1 to 4, and uh, as I increase the offset distance, I'm eliminating the closest terrain points. Let's leave it at 2.2. Now let's shift our focus to the building area. I recommend working with base surfaces that are as simple as possible, so as not to have an excess number of vertices. Under Mesh Utilities there are some tools to control mesh settings. I'm gonna take the custom. Changing only the last two inputs will suffice in this instance. Again note that the edge length parameters depend on the scale of your project. Now I have some control over the mesh structure for the base surfaces. It's time to merge these two sets of points and construct a single mesh terrain. In this instance we can simply flatten the result to make sure that all the points are on the same list. And then construct the Delaunay mesh from this new set of points. I'm gonna turn off the preview for some of the components for clarity and let's have a look. All seems fine, the zones for buildings are now flat, and to better understand mesh faces we could also use the flat shade mode for display. So we have incorporated flat areas for buildings into our mesh terrain, but what about some paths or roads? Here I have an untrimmed surface representing the path. We can manipulate it using control points. In this instance, I'm going to use the merge component again and combine base surfaces and the path surface into a single list. Flatten the output and reconnect the new list. I'm going to turn off the merge preview for clarity and you can see the immediate result in the Rhino viewport. If I change the position of the path, you can see how the mesh terrain adapts. We can also change its shape using the control points, and the mesh terrain would adapt accordingly. And again, we could check the mesh using flat shade preview. 
This works pretty well. Let's now try using a more complex trimmed surface. I simply merge the trimmed path instead of the untrimmed one and then we can manipulate some parameters and see what values work best. I'm gonna stop here with the Delaunay mesh. Such terrain might require adjusting the parameters quite a bit to make it work. So instead I'm gonna move to Rhino 7 and see how to remesh the terrain. In Rhino 7 under Mesh Triangulation you can find the new remesh tool Try Remesh. If you're interested you can also explore the other new tools here, but we are going to use only the Try Remesh tool. So let's grab it and investigate the inputs. We have the initial geometry input, optional target mesh, boolean option for sharp features, then the actual features to preserve, target mesh edge length, and the number of steps for remeshing. And we have three outputs the triangulated mesh, the dual mesh, and the edge lines of sharp features. Let's use the initial mesh terrain as an input geometry and leave target mesh and sharp features empty. Then convert surfaces to curves and input them as features to preserve. We can extract the edges of the preserved features to see if all works well. I'm also going to turn on the profiler widget to evaluate how heavy the computation is and if we need to, we could also use the data dam. Now let's go back to the input parameters and change the resolution, so the target edge length. The length input depends on scale, so make sure to set values that fit your project. You can investigate, test and see what settings work best in your case. Ok, so we have finished the terrain. We have a clean triangulated mesh with a path and flat areas for buildings. Let's now have a look at creating a closed mesh from this terrain. There might be instances where you need a watertight geometry for fabrication, so here I'm going to show you just one of many possible ways to do it. I begin by extracting the naked edges, that's the first mesh edges output. Then I'm going to go under Transform, Affine and project naked mesh edges onto the default XY plane. You can set different plane if you need to. I have two sets of lines here and I'm going to match and merge them using the merge component. Pay attention to the param viewer. If we'd merge the list this way, we'd get a single list with all the items. But I need to get pairs of lines on each list, so I need to graft the inputs. Ok, the data structure is now correct, so I can create surfaces between these lines. Under Surface, Freeform, let's grab the loft component and input the lines. We now have the side walls as surfaces. Let's go under Mesh, Utilities and choose Simple Mesh to convert surfaces to meshes. I'm going to turn off the unnecessary previews and flatten the output list. Then we need to cap the bottom. Under Mesh, Utilities, I'm going to pick Mesh Shadow. With this component, we get a single closed polyline that we can instantly convert into a planar mesh. It's possible to change the light angle and the plane that receives the shadows, but I'm going to keep the default settings. Now we have all the parts. I'm going to use the merge component again, flatten the output, and then join the mesh. And just to be on the safe side, let's also unify mesh normals. All works fine, so we can finally merge the initial mesh terrain as well. If you're curious, you can check how many mesh faces were flipped. In my case, it's more than a thousand. To see if we don't have naked or non-manifold edges, we can add the mesh edges component. Make sure to turn on the Draw Fancy Wires option to see the orange wire warning. The first and the last outputs should be empty. We're almost done, just a few final notes. So of course this method would work without the remeshing and you can bake the geometry in Rhino and check the mesh there as well. Just be aware that with meshes you might need to readjust the settings a few times 
before you find the suitable parameter combination. Finally, we've reached the bonus part. Let's see how to extract base surfaces from buildings. Here I have a BREP container with poly surfaces referenced from Rhino. I'm going to deconstruct BREPs, extract the center points of the faces, and evaluate the Z coordinate of each face, determining which faces are the lowest and extracting them using the list item component. Connect the new surfaces. We can also flatten the output here and then check how the algorithm works. All looks fine. So this is it for this video. I invite you to check out another tutorial on this topic if you haven't done so already. I will see you in the next one.